In 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first man to ever set foot on the moon. But one of the most famous legends that came out of this moon landing was from a missing two minutes of audio transmission that was being broadcast live on national television. As legend has it, during this missing two minutes, Neil Armstrong had apparently switched his radio over to the medical channel, which was not public, and had apparently said this to NASA. These babies are huge, sir. Oh God, you wouldn't believe it. I'm telling you, there are other spacecraft out there lined up on the far side of the crater's edge. They're on the moon watching us. Now this legend was confirmed by NASA engineer Otto Binder, who was monitoring the uncensored version of these radio frequencies during the mission. But despite Otto's credibility, his claims were mostly written off by the media because NASA insisted that the only reason the audio cut out is because one of the cameras on board overheated, thus interfering with the reception. That is until in 1979, Maurice Chatelain, former chief of NASA communications, wrote in his book, moments before Armstrong stepped down the ladder to set foot on the moon, two UFOs hovered overhead. Edwin Aldridge took several pictures of them some of these photographs have been published in the June 1975 issue of Modern People magazine. The encounter was common knowledge in NASA, but nobody talked about it until now. Now, whether or not this legend is true, the moon itself is a very bizarre space object. For example, the moon is about one fourth the size of the planet Earth, making it the fifth largest moon in our entire solar system. No other planet that we're aware of has a moon that's that big relative to the size of the planet it's orbiting, which brings us to the orbit. Did you know that the same side of the moon is always facing the Earth? This is because the moon rotates rotates exactly one time for every one orbit that it takes around the planet Earth. Meaning that every time you've ever looked at the moon in your entire life, you've always seen the exact same thing. So if you think about it, the only people who have ever seen the backside of the moon with their own eyes are the Apollo astronauts. And what's crazier is that if you took the distance between the Earth and the moon and you divided it by the diameter of the moon, you get the number 108. And ironically, if you did the same for the sun, taking the distance from Earth, dividing it by its diameter, you also get the number 108. And because of this ratio, during a solar eclipse, the moon perfectly blocks out the sun to the millimeter because the moon is exactly 400 times smaller than the sun and is 400 times closer to Earth than the sun, which is kind of crazy to think about when you realize the significance of this number, 108. The radius of the moon itself is 1,080 miles, a multiple of 108. This temple in Cambodia, built in the 12th century, has exactly 108 towers, and the Hindu and the Buddhist religions consider the number 108 as the basis of creation, representing our existence in the universe. But here's what really gets me. If any of these weird moon coincidences did not exist, then neither would life on planet Earth as we know it. There would be no tides, there would be no seasons, and there would likely be no intelligent life, leading many people to believe that maybe the moon was put there by some other form of intelligence, which is an interesting theory to consider because there are ancient cultures that have been around for tens of thousands of years, which talk about a time before the moon. Aristotle, for example, wrote about a group of people called the Proselenes, which translates directly to those that were before the moon in Greek. Tribesmen of the Chibka Indian tribe of Colombia speak of the early times when the moon was not yet in the heavens. And the Zulu tribe of Africa speaks about the moon symbolically as an egg because the insides were hollowed out like egg yolk. That way it could be used as a base to watch over the humans. According to their legend, it came from a reptilian race led by two leaders named Wawani and Mpanku who quote, stole the moon from the great python and positioned it where it is. Prior to this, the Zulu say the earth was shrouded in a watery mist which came raining down to earth when the moon was put into orbit. Now, this next part is what really fucks with my head. There is real evidence from the NASA moon missions suggesting that the moon may in fact be hollow like the Zulu believe. You see, in 1969, during the Apollo 12 missions, just months after the Apollo 11 moon landing, NASA made an impact crater on the moon in a planned crash of the rocket that helped them get back off the surface when they were returning home. And they crashed it near some seismographs that they had set up. And they did this so that way they could use the seismographs to measure the data that came in just to get a better idea of how dense the moon was. And upon impact, the seismic results showed that the moon reverberated like a bell for over an hour. This result obviously shocked scientists because the moon is largely made of a rock called basalt. And basalt itself is a lightweight rock that absorbs impacts very well. Therefore, it shouldn't reverberate like a bell when you hit it. So after this result, Dr. Werner von Braun, who's the former head of NASA, he decided that in the next mission on Apollo 13, they were going to crash a bigger portion of the rocket into the moon just to see if they got a similar result. And when they did this, the moon ran like a gong for over three hours into a depth of 20 miles. Now, this was immediately played down by NASA because the idea of the moon being hollow literally contradicts our understanding of how physics and planets form. You see, most scientists believe that the moon was formed because of a Mars-sized planet which crashed into Earth, coalescing into the rock that we now know as the moon. But this is just a theory, and if the moon were in fact hollow, it would immediately disprove that theory. In fact, Carl Sagan, who is basically the Neil deGrasse Tyson of the 1960s, he wrote in his book, 
called intelligent life in the universe, then a natural satellite like the moon cannot be hollow. And if it is, then it must be artificial. And this conclusion was backed by two Russian scientists, Michael Vassin and Alexander Sherbakov, who published an article in Sputnik magazine with their conclusion saying that the moon is an artificial Earth satellite put into orbit around the Earth by some intelligent beings unknown to ourselves. Which brings me to some of the evidence that they point out as to why they think the moon might be artificial. The first thing that we got to look at are the craters. Upon further examination, it's very obvious that many of the moon's craters are in fact convex instead of concave. Now, if you assume that these craters were formed by impacts, like most craters tend to be, then they would naturally be concave like many of the craters that we see on planet Earth or other planets like Mars. That is, unless at a certain depth, the surface of the moon is so hard that it can withstand impact after impact for millions of years without caving in, which seems like a crazy conclusion because when you compare the moon's craters side by side, no matter how wide the crater is, these craters almost always seem to go to roughly the same depth. Interestingly enough, on the Apollo missions, they tried to dig into one of these craters and they were barely able to penetrate the surface of the moon because at a certain depth, they were drilling into pure metal. So they collected a lot of these samples of moon dust from around the crater and on the edge of the crater. And what they found shocked them. Certain lunar samples contained up to 10% titanium, which is surprising because the highest abundance of titanium rich minerals on earth rarely if ever exceed 1%. And they also found other processed metals like mica and brass, as well as radioactive elements such as uranium-236 and neptunium, none of which occur naturally on planet Earth. So this brings up the question, why have we not heard about these results, or at least the significance of some of these results? The hollow nature of the rare metals, the perfect size and orbit for life, the ancient legends of a time before the moon, if any one of these were true, it would change our understanding of reality. But if all of them were true, then you'd have to be awful stubborn to believe that it's just a coincidence that happened to occur naturally. And since the Apollo missions ended, many people believe that NASA knows something about the moon that they're not willing to tell the public. Evidence of this conclusion appears in a report from the Brookings Institute called The Implications of a Discovery of Extraterrestrial Life, where they basically stated that if they ever found signs of intelligent life, they should not tell the public in order to avoid mass panic. So given the Brookings report, if they did in fact find something on the moon, this could possibly explain the body language and demeanor of the Apollo 11 astronauts in a press conference that they did when they returned to planet Earth, where you can see that they visibly look nervous, agitated, on edge, almost as if they know something that they're not allowed to talk about, or they saw something that scared the crap out of them. And here's what's interesting. This Brookings report came out in the year 1960, nine years before we ever landed on the moon. Who was the president in 1960? Dwight D. Eisenhower, which is interesting because he's the first ever president to allegedly have had a handshake agreement with extraterrestrials in 1952. And I tell the entire story of how this happened in this video right here. Go check it out.